Hi guys, this is Chris Kovach, Solutions Consultant in Northeastern Florida for Toby Dynabox. And in this video, what we're going to cover is how to install an S2 mounting system from the connected line onto a standard manual wheelchair. In a previous video, I talked to you guys a little bit about how to choose and verify the size uh, mount that you would need for this type of chair. So if you have any questions on that, please refer back to that video. Uh, but what we're going to do now is look at the two options and I'm going to show you how to install from there. So in that first video, we talked about using a one inch round tube fastener. So that is a potential option for us. Or we could use the one inch side clamp. Now what I failed to mention in the previous video was that the side clamp has a huge benefit uh, if we were trying to mount somewhere on this chair where the seat pan or there were other things attached to the top of the frame. And we wouldn't be able to wrap this entire fastener around the frame, we wouldn't have the clearance for it. So the side clamp is a great alternative for that because it clamps from the side of the mount itself and leaves that top open. So we have a lot more clearance and allows us to get into tighter spaces. Okay, so what I wanna show you now is how to assemble this because it comes separated in the bag when it shows up from Toby Dynabox. So you're gonna have these two pieces here. You'll notice that on the inside of one of these pieces, these two holes are threaded. These two holes are not. So just make sure that you keep that in mind because it's gonna be important. All right, so what we do now is we open up our parts and we'll see that we have a couple bolts that come with it and then this black disc, all right? So this black disc has quite a few different holes and locations and what we wanna do is take the piece of our side clamp that does not have the threads and we want to match up those holes. So we're just gonna rotate this around until we find out where the holes match up with the side clamp. All right, and then we're gonna slide our bolts through to keep that in place. And we can lightly start to tighten up just a few threads. We wanna keep this pretty loose, but we don't want it to fall apart as we're using it as well. So just a couple threads in, and that allows us to stretch and get around that tube. So now that that's partially assembled, we can come over to our chair, clamp that in wherever we think the position is gonna be best, and we wanna also pay attention to our angle here, right? So we don't want to install like this because we're not building our mount up and away. We want this to be parallel um, to the, or I'm sorry, perpendicular to the ground. So with that in the proper place, I can take my red handled tool, which is a five millimeter Allen, and I'm just gonna to start to snug this up on both sides. Now I do recommend going in evenly. So as you start to get some tension on that first bolt, don't go all the way in, don't crank it down all the way slide over to the next one and try and keep everything about the same tension as we go in. Okay, so now I'm starting to get tension on it and I'm just gonna keep working maybe half a turn to a full turn on both sides, tightening it up evenly. And you don't have to hulk on this. Um, you want it to be snug, but remember you're using steel bolts and this fastener is aluminum. So if you put too much pressure on it, those steel threads are gonna rip the aluminum threads right out of the back and then this piece is gonna be damaged. All right, so the next part that we're gonna work on, since we don't need our one inch round, I'm just gonna set that stuff to the side. The next piece is this connected mount to chair fastener rotational lock. So I wanted to show you guys what this looks like coming out of the bag because there's a couple pieces and another Allen key in there that I wanna make sure everybody's comfortable using. First piece that comes out is going to be this tube clamp. Uh, we'll talk about this a little bit later when we get uh, the first tube installed, but you'll see it's just a round piece, has a hole in the middle, and a lot of people just refer to this as the donut. Okay. Next, we have another Allen key. This is gonna be important when we talk about the rotational locking mechanism within this main component. So we'll take this out, set our bag to the side, and you'll notice that this is going to be the part where the tube comes up and out onto the mounting system. So this is our rotational section. So this back piece right here allows us to rotate this on an angle so that we can tilt a couple degrees either direction to find the direct location or the best location for us to start to build that mounting system. As you're installing this, 
One thing to make sure of is that this lever closes to the back of the chair. Now that's important because if we installed this the opposite direction and the lever was facing this way, someone driving this through a doorway, someone walking by with loose clothing or a bag may catch this lever, open it, and potentially, if we don't have other pieces installed, allow the mount to rotate away, allow the mount to slip, or just become general, generally loose, uh, which is what we want to avoid. So always make sure that that lever closes to the rear of the chair. As we install this, you'll notice that there are two bolts within this rotating lock. You have this main bolt in the middle. That's going to be your five millimeter, so that red handle tool. And then you're going to have the smaller bolt on the side that's going to adjust and lock in place our rotation, which I'll show you in just a moment. All right, so what we're gonna start with is lining up that main bolt in the back to the center hole here. So we're gonna take our red handle five millimeter and we're just gonna to start to loosely thread that in. Now you'll notice, I'm gonna back this out and show you, you'll notice on the back of this piece, there is a pin, right? So this is our part of our locking mechanism. That pin is going to line up in any of these four holes and it's gonna help stop the system from actually turning once we lock it in place. So we'll start to line that up and we'll loosely put this in. Now don't crank this down yet because we're going to probably make a few adjustments but you'll notice I can still rotate all of this. I have a rotational ability. Slide that up just a touch. I'm going to open up my other Allen key here and I'm going to loosen that first one. And with that loose, if I come back and loosen this a little bit, I can rotate this entire piece. Right? So what I wanna do is find out what, where my angle is going to be, and then I can snug both of these bolts up. So I may angle that just a touch, snug that up, and then come back in and snug this one up as well. Now you'll notice that I'm using the long end of this Allen key. You can sneak in there with the short end, and it just barely makes it, but it gives you more uh, torque. So you can get that a little bit tighter if you need to by using the short end of that key. All right, so now we, we have this installed in a rough position. Remember, we may come back and have to adjust this a couple degrees, uh, depending on where we go with the mounting system. But what we're gonna look at now is our S-tube and our tube clamp. So there's a couple things to keep in mind. This S-tube, See right there, I'm gonna run into a little bit of a, an issue with an obstruction on my chair. All right, so I'm gonna loosen that brake and uh, for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna continue with the install, but I would most likely look at adjusting my location for this mount, uh, either sliding a little bit farther forward uh, so that when this brake is completely open, I'm not hitting that obstruction. So what I'm doing here is I'm sliding this tube down into, oh, see, I hit another obstruction. This is real life, guys. <laughs> so what we're gonna do now, I just realized I'm actually rubbing right here with my tube, which I didn't anticipate. So what I have to do is adjust my angle for here, for this entire mounting system. So I'm gonna go back and I actually have to disassemble a little bit, take this piece off. And I'm gonna loosen these back up, just enough to rotate it. But I have to loosen both sides. And I'm gonna rotate that just a little bit down, a couple degrees. Snug it back up, and we'll check again for fit. So you may get, find that you have to do this a couple times to make sure everything clears, uh, because on some of these chairs, you have obstructions, you have things you have to work around that the client needs or wants on that chair, and we're just gonna do our best to make it all fit for them. So I'm gonna just loosely snug that one up, just to dry fit this and see if now, now I have my clearance. I'm a little bit farther away uh, and I can go right from here. So now what I'm looking at is my general height and my angle, all right? So typically we try to keep this as straight as possible and we would like this to be as vertical as possible, but I have some obstructions here that we're gonna work around. So I have a little bit of an angle on my tube, um, but you'll notice right now that with this lever open, this tube can just go up and down. That's where this tube clamp is going to come in place. So if I figure that my height has got to be roughly in that direction, or I'm sorry, in that location, I'm going to just mark that with my thumb 
or my finger as I lift the tube out, just so I can remember where that's at. And then I'm going to loosen up, make sure it's loose. That should come pre-loosened. Uh, and I want to make sure that I install this the proper way. So if my mount comes like this, I want to make sure that I see these grooves for the ability for the rotational ability and the locking ability right on the top of this tube clamp. I'm going to slide that up right onto about where my thumb is. Now, the next question is, do we want this mounting system to be able to swing out 90 degrees to help with transfers, or do we want it to be locked in place? Uh, we'll do the locked in place version, um, but we'll talk about the rotational ability as well. So again, looking at the top of this tube uh, clamp, you'll notice that there's a single pinhole, and then there's a track indicator right here on the side as well. So as you're going to mount this, it helps to guide you as to where those tracks are and what they line up to on the bottom of this tube clamp. You'll see that that's our lock in place position, and then this would be our rotational. So if I have this in the right position, I may have to dry fit this again, rotate it around, make sure my angles are correct, and I'm gonna rotate that until, there we go, until I hear that pin engage with that single hole on the bottom. Now before I snug everything up, I'm gonna check and make sure, okay, my angles are where I want them, and then I'm gonna lift this back out carefully. I'm gonna take my tool and I'm gonna lock that in place. And you don't have to crank this down real, real hard, just make sure it's snug. So now that that's in place, this allows me a couple features. One, as I'm building a mounting system, I can lock that in and I know that this is gonna be stable. Two, if someone comes along and happens to open this lever, as I showed you before, now nothing shifts, right? This acts as kind of a safety stop for us so the device and everything doesn't slide down. So from here, I'm gonna close up my lever and we're gonna talk about building up the rest of the mounting system. All right, so the next piece that we're gonna need is this two tube coupling with a lever, right? So we're gonna loosen this up and this coupling simply slips over the top of that S tube and then we take our included straight tube Slide that in as well, and we're building the angle to come over. So we have some adjustments here. We can angle the tube up if we need to come higher, down lower, in, farther away. We can even slide up or down on this tube to meet the proper location for that particular user. Once we get a general idea of where we want it, we're gonna rotate that lever, lock it up, and continue building forward. One thing to notice about this lever if you come around and look at this um, bolt right here, a lot of people get confused that they think they have to push on this bolt to help lock or unlock that lever. All this allows you to do is release the actual arm so that it doesn't engage with the teeth. So if you needed to reposition this lever to get more tension on it or to get it out of the way before I had it over here, maybe that was gonna catch somebody coming around the corner, you could just lift that out and set it like that so that it's out of the way, okay? We'll go like that. And now we can take our device holder. This is a two lever device holder. I'm gonna loosen up this back lever. I'm gonna slide that right over the end of this horizontal tube, roughly in the center where I think that client is gonna use the device. And this first lever here adjusts the ball joint. So once I install my, my, I, my I series device, if I want to fine tune it after doing all of these levers, loosening this lever will allow me to change that position of the ball joint. It's important to note that we want you to use this lever and not to just crank on the device to move the angle. If you do not loosen this lever and you're just cranking on the device, you will eventually wear out this ball joint and it won't hold any tension at all and it's going to constantly do that and just fall to the bottom. So we want to make sure that anytime we make those adjustments, use these levers. Okay. Then from here, we take our device and we want to make sure that the mount plate is installed properly. So this is a reversible mount plate that works with Connected and Daisy. And it should come from the factory if we ordered it all at the same time. With a connected mount and a device, it should come pre-installed the proper way. If it does not, what we want to do is grab this little torch tool that came with the, uh, the device 
you can loosen up these three bolts, flip the plate around, and tighten up the bolts again to get you to the right mounting uh, plate position, whether you're using DAISY or connected. In this case, we are using connected. This is set up properly because we're going to engage these with the actual, I'll slide this off real quick, just to show you, with these grooves here. So these are going to line up, and when we make the connection that was on the mounting system, we're lining those up, we're clicking it in place. Now, note of caution, do not trust the sound of it clicking in place. Whoops. I've had people, when they go to install this, they're paying attention to the safety pin, and they're not paying attention to the far side. They see the safety pin, they hear it click, but they'll notice that this side's not engaged, and if they let go of the device or they don't test it first, the device could take a tumble. So what I typically recommend is installing that, give it a shake a couple times, make sure it's engaged on both sides, then let it go. All right, so just showing you what that looks like on the mounting system itself. Put this roughly in the same position. Slide it into place, check it, can make my fine tune adjustments, and there we go. All right. So the last thing you would do, guys, is take this whole mount off and then come back and kind of quality check and make sure you have all your bolts nice and tight that we didn't miss or forget to tighten anything for the user. So to do that, we would loosen this black lever. And the nice thing about this S-tube mount is now this entire piece can lift off and away. So as we're transporting the mounting system, it's very easy to get the, the chair into a car, into a van, or onto a bus. So we come back through, make sure we tighten everything up. You can check all of these joints and you should be good to go, guys. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at 1-800-344-1778. Thanks.